I live here in Indonesia, on an island, in a house made of bamboo, when I'm not banging in the gods, or saving the ocean. I'm reading books, science books. Unfortunately, due to a slightly misspent youth, my brain doesn't retain information very well. <coughs> yeah. So I did some research. Turns out if you summarize something, it stays in your brain longer. So I'm starting this YouTube series called Stuff I Learned in the House of Bamboo. Thanks, Andy Williams. To kick things off, we're going to keep it light. Neuroscience. Oh, balls. I'm reading this book by Robert Sapolsky. Look at that beard. He's like a biology Gandalf. That's better. Anyway, he's trying to unpack human behavior. Our behavior is influenced by biology, psychology, culture, etc. So you have to think broad. But first, let's think narrow. One second before you decide to itch your balls, what happened? The nervous system. The nervous system happened. The cells that make up the nervous system are called neurons. Unlike small, rounded cells, neurons are elongated. There's one from your spine to your toe that's three feet long. These gangly, tree-like cells communicate by getting each other excited. Oi, mate, I've got some banging drum and bass. Yes, yes lad. lad. <laughs> Okay, back to the neurons. One end receives information. These are called dendrites. Think of them as ears. One end sends information, axonal endings, or the mouth. Dendrites get a signal. Mmm, this excites them. They pass it on down the axon to the ending, then on to the next neuron. But how? I hear you cry. Well, I'll tell you. A wave of electronic excitation. Inside neurons, you've got positive and negative ions. Same outside. When a neuron receives a signal in one dendritic fiber, channels in the membrane of that dendrite open, allowing the free flow of ions in and out. This results in the dendrite becoming positively charged. But Josh, why does the neuron become more positively charged? That's a good question, Jimmy. I'm glad you asked it. You know that shit saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't see anything at all? Yes. Well, that's how neurons work. Except trade out nice for positive. If a neuron is positively charged, it has something to say. Thank you, Brick. And when they have nothing to say, they're negatively charged. You can leave now, Brick. All the way. Neurons are all about contrast. On or off. Shouting or silent. When in silent mode, we call this resting potential. This is maintained by the neuron's semi-permeable membrane. Okay, bear with me. Shit's about to get technical. Boring. Cartman, fuck off. Lame. In neurons, the charge at resting potential is negative 70 millivolts. The ions involved are positively charged sodium and potassium and negatively charged chlorine. Neurons also manufacture large negatively charged proteins called anions. These fat little bastards can't fit through the ion channels, so just sit in the cell being all negative. At resting potential, there is a higher concentration of sodium ions outside of the neuron, so they want to diffuse in, down the concentration gradient. The opposite is true of the potassium ions, so they want to diffuse out, to maintain the ratio, the neuron will use a sodium-potassium pump. For every two potassium ions it pumps in, three sodium ions are ejected, maintaining the charge of negative 70 millivolts. The chlorine ions are negatively charged, so are electrostatically repelled out of the neuron, but the concentration gradient pushes them back. This push-pull effect maintains equilibrium at negative 70 millivolts. So our neuron is chilling at resting potential with nothing to say. What could possibly go wrong? That's a neurotransmitter or a signaling molecule. The signal causes the sodium channels to open and the sodium ions rush in, turning the resting potential into action potential. Showtime. It's showtime. It's showtime. It's a showtime. It's showtime. It's showtime. Don't say it, please, don't say it. It's showtime. Actually, Arnold, that's not always the case. You shouldn't. I'm not shooting on you. Sometimes the signal isn't large enough to travel the entire neuron. A single positively charged dendrite isn't enough. This is the axon hillock. If the resting potential of the hillock goes from negative 70 to negative 40 millivolts, the shit hits the fan. With just a few dendrites firing, the threshold is not met and there's no action potential. When loads fire, boom, the threshold is met and the axon hillock opens up the sodium channels. 
the ions rush in and the charge inside rises to plus 30 millivolts. I know, that's a lot of millivolts. The action potential then shoots down the axon to the terminal and the signal is passed on to the next neuron. I will now try and demonstrate this with Bugs Life. Say, let's pretend this brain is a puny little... Positively charged dendrite. That... Reach your threshold of negative 40 millivolts? <laughs> nope. Well, how about this one? Are you kidding? <laughs> well, how about this? Well, that was fun. That's pretty much it for this episode of Stuff I Learned in the House of Bamboo. Love you, Andy.